Welcome back, GRD 121 Computer Graphics, to part two of our wine bottle label. And in our wine bottle file that we're working on, and on a different page, I have some logos that I'm working with here. And I'll zoom out so you can see what I have. And I was just messing around with this Oak Hollow logo. Again, just a name I made up. No big deal. I can move this to the side. I could throw this one in if I like just having the plain leaf, something like that. I mean, you can even throw a little drop shadow on it. Maybe that would look nice if you threw a little little drop shadow on here. Again, you don't have to follow exactly what I do, but try to follow the, the way I'm doing things. Be very conservative. Don't go crazy looking at a million different fonts. Uh, just find what you can do with just simple fonts. Simple serif, simple sans serif. Maybe I'll use a script for the maple. But just kind of be very subtle about it. That's kind of the audience that we're looking at with a wine label. And if I try to drop shadow on here, probably wouldn't be much because it's a very small leaf. I'll just do five, 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 and I think I'll do 50, and that may be too much because it's a really small leaf. So if I zoom in here, and don't zoom in too much because you don't see the shadow anymore. It doesn't display the shadow if you get too close. Uh, if you ever have, I ran into that and I didn't know what it was. So now it's like five, that's too much. I'll try two, 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 and see how that works. And that's not too bad and I have a 50% opacity, so that looks okay. And again, I don't know if I could zoom in. See, it goes away if you zoom in too much. It doesn't generate the shadow, but that looks okay. There's no reason to put a shadow on black type because sometimes it looks blurry, but a shadow on red will look nice. So that looks okay there. And you know, you could throw something else down here. I might just take my text tool and just throw a little thing down here. It says your text here. I'll just put since 1967, because that's when I was born. So I'll just put that there. And then I can click on it again with my pointer tool, click on the outside and go in. And then now it's in that Amico right now, which I use for wineries, but maybe I'll go back and I'll use, it was Crimson Pro I was using. So there's a huge list of fonts. And, and again, there's a lot of neat stuff in here. These web fonts, there's great fonts, but they're not real traditional fonts. So they take some time to get used to. So I'm gonna look for Crimson Pro down here. You can see how many just C's there are. And, and I saw this one, Creepster. That would have been nice for our Halloween thing. I didn't know they had Creepster in here. That would have been perfect. But anyway, uh, Crimson Pro. And I'll go into my style dropdown. I'll do light italic. And I'll make it nice and small. Something like that. Maybe even a little smaller. It's, sometimes it's hard to do this. You could double click here and put a number in if that's easier. I mean, I wouldn't leave it on 23. I'd put it on like 24 or something, like a standard point size. And you could even go here if I move this up a little, and I'll move this up just a little bit. And I might spread this out. This wouldn't need a lot. I wouldn't want to spread it out like wineries is, but I might want to go in here and just put like 0.1 and see what that looks like. And that might be too much. Even that might be too much. So I might go 0.05. And that's a little lighter. And you can see what I'm doing. That's, I'm even like kind of out here at a distance, but by being zoomed out, I can see the overall look of it a little bit, the way that what stands out is bold, what's lighter. So I'm just doing something like that. And that may be my logo. And now if I need to center all this stuff, what I could do is I could highlight all these. If I decide to go with this one instead of that thing, and I could just do the align, and that aligns everything pretty nice. And I could just leave it go right now. Now eventually if I use it, I'm gonna group it, but I'm just gonna leave it empty right now because I may wanna copy things from here to use in my maple leaf. So I'm going to try something different with my maple leaf. I'm going to just fill it with a solid green, maybe like a like a hunter green, a dark green. So I'll make sure I change this to color fill. And although, although that looks nice, that yellow, <laughs> that yellow looks nice. That would look nice on a white label. But I'll go to green and I'll make it darker. And I may make it a little, little pale, maybe something like that. I'm going to start with that and I'll make it smaller. Now, instead of just doing one leaf like I did with the other one, I think I might try and center this a little bit and maybe put one on either side. I'll do something kind of symmetrical. I'll stick with symmetrical. You don't have to. You could do something that starts left and works left to right. Here's one thing I'll show you real quick. I, I don't know this tool really well, so, so don't, if you have problems with it, I, I'm not going into a whole lesson on a tool, but let's say you want to chop off this end if you think that stems too long. They have this knife tool. And again, I haven't used it a lot, but I think if you just take the knife and just kind of go through it like that, and then you might say, well, what did it do? And then if I go back to my pointer, it puts like, a, it like cuts it. And then I could take this bottom and just delete it. So that's what the knife did. 
and then I, I could could go in here mess with the anchor points round it off or something if I want to I guess I I guess I could since I'm trying to be careful here I could go into my sub select and maybe just round off the bottom maybe pull that out a little go in a little just give it a nice a little bit so it doesn't look as as blunt on the end not that that's perfect but but that looks I guess a little better I think so there's my maple leaf. Now what I might do, now I didn't do any text yet, and again, don't do this. Don't think you're gonna make a maple leaf and put your text in the middle. That never looks good unless you made this real light and you went over it. But some, sometimes people try to put words in the middle of objects and that doesn't always look good. I'm just telling you from experience. So uh, I'm just using these as an accent to type. So, so make them kind of go together. It's like putting on, you know, if you're female, putting on jewelry or something that accents something else. It's not going to be the main thing going on. So what I'll do here is, is this will accent whatever type we work with. So I'll go back to my pointer and I'll copy this. And I'm just using a drag copy, Option key or Alt if you're on Windows. And I'm just going to make it smaller. I should hold Shift and I'll zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing a little better. And maybe I'll rotate this just a little bit out doesn't have to be that small I'll go a little bigger but I'll kind of do it so that little point goes in there and maybe I'll make it lighter and for right now we're not dealing with the color a whole lot so I'm just gonna stay in this range here and just make it a lighter color and I'll hold my space bar and move over and I'll do the same thing on the other side now I can just duplicate this and I can hold my option key and drag it over here and again that would be your alt key if you know how to do that drag or you could duplicate it and just move it over now I'd want to flip it so it's the same same angle and you could even do this if you selected this and this now th those points are at different locations so maybe this won't work but you could align them like that so they're even now that maple leaf is a little off because that points a little lower so I, I could rotate this a little bit do something like that that might look okay at least they're all kind of even and now what I'll do is I'll just put some text on the bottom here and I could copy this oak hollow. I don't have to retype anything. I could drag copy this. I'm not going to use the same font, although it might look okay. And if you click in here and you do Command A or Control A, it'll highlight everything. Then you can start typing. So I'm going to type maple, what was I going to call it? Um, how about maple leaf? That's all I can think of. Maple leaf vineyards or something, you know, maybe something like that. So. I'm going to start with this. I'll make it a little bit bigger. I'll just use the point size right now. Now, for a different kind of font, now it's got pointy kind of things on it, so I don't want it to be too different. I don't want a real straight font like a sans serif font. But one of the things I think I was working with was, was looking for scripty fonts. You know, now nothing too light, although that's kind of, actually, <laughs> I kind of like that. It's called Dancing Script. That doesn't look bad. That, that has a nice kind of you know flow to it that would it still looks sophisticated enough and it goes with the leaves a little bit it might have to be bigger um, but you might want to experiment and look around at some script font you know croissant how does that look well it's a little stiff obviously you wouldn't want to use creepster that would not work with that but if you look for some nice scripty kind of fonts i find that hard to read i think one i had i had messed with was called Pl play ball or something not play bill but play ball so uh, you could try out different things here there's a lot there's lots of nice scripts that's nice although you got to watch it's very thin so you get thin scripts may not look good at small sizes you don't want something that looks like a kid font anything like that or anything with two fine lines you know that looks like it's on a wedding invitation you know that's kind of nice you know, you got to keep in mind that small sizes, great vibes. That looks, that's a nice script font. You know, maybe it wouldn't, with all the big leaves there, it's not a great look. You might want smaller leaves, you know, if you use something like that. And actually, maybe I'll try that. I, I don't, I think that looks kind of nice. And I'll go a little bigger with it. That looks something like you could possibly see. Now, I think these maple leaves are a little big. I think they overpowered a little. So now I'm going to go small. I'll highlight them all and make them smaller. And I'll just, put them right there so they kind of act like an accent just like just like the one leaf did up here you know now they kind of go together now maybe you could do something on the side maybe you could have a couple random you know maybe instead of like like a big emblem like that you can you can do something I'm kind of changing my ideas here but maybe you could go here and just try random you know so they look like leaves that are kind of falling around a little bit and maybe there's a smaller one there there's a bigger one there you know now they're a little more random you know you could do something like that I don't know the idea is to experiment a little bit with it. 
you know, maybe they're different colors. Maybe, maybe this is the case where you say, oh, well, that one's going to be, you know, if you think of maple leaves, you know, sometimes they could be yellow, they could be orangey. There's an orangey kind of color. Maybe this could be kind of red, you know, but, but not a red like that, maybe a little toned down red. You know, you could go with more of a pastel kind of look and, you know, maybe that could fit in this little, little nook here. You know, look for little nooks to fit things in. Again, I'm just trying this. This isn't the way I did it the other time. So, and then maybe I'll go with a, a green one. Now, obviously I wouldn't want a bright green like that. I'm using kind of these pastel looking colors here. And maybe I'll make that go. So so almost they, they have like a little random feel. You gotta be careful because that one looks too much like that. So I might rotate it out a little. Just looking for little nooks here. Color might have to be a little bit lighter. But, you know, there's something. And, and maybe this black is too harsh. Maybe you don't want a harsh black color. Maybe you want like a, you know, a nice gray color. Maybe that looks nice. And then I'll copy this thing. Instead of retyping wineries, maybe I'll use wineries again. And I'll copy this wineries down here. And might have to go a little bigger. And, you know, something like that. And maybe you'd pull out a color that, that pulls it all together, like this red color. You know, maybe you go with wineries, maybe you like that color, but it's a little on the light side, so you go a little darker, but it stays in the same family. So it, now it has kind of a wine color, but it doesn't really, you know, overpower because it's, it's small. You know, I mean, you could even use a serif font down here. You could try something like, like that crimson. Now I think you can type crimson up here, and there it comes up, Crimson Pro. And something like that doesn't look bad. I'll make that 24. And maybe I want to go a little heavier, like a medium, just slightly heavier. And maybe I want to spread it out a little bit more. And it's at 0.2. I'll go here to 0.3, see how that looks. And that gets really wide. And if it does, then try 0.25. That's OK. And I don't need a line here. And you might think, well, why not a line? It looked good on the other one. Well, I have this real uneven bottom here, which up here, everything was on the same line. Now, if I had a letter that had a descender, like a P or something, that would be a problem with the line, but it, it aligns things really well on that one. This one, because you know these letters come down here, it, a line probably wouldn't look good. I don't want a line down there. I want it a little more open. Now, I don't know what is centered here. I'm just kind of centering it by eye on here because I, I think even if you did center it, because of this big swirl on the M, it may not look right. So that looks pretty good. So I might try something like that, and I'm just gonna I'm just going to steal this and make a copy of it and put it down here. And maybe I'll make it a little bigger. I'll make it like 30. And can I use this font? Well, here's the deal. D don't start mixing a lot of fonts. I used Crimson Pro here, and this is in the Crimson Pro family. Don't go find another serif font. If you're using Crimson Pro and that's your serif font, use that. Or, or use this thing down here. Now, I don't know how no sometimes numbers don't look good in a script font. So whatever font this is, that great vibes. If I put this in great vibes, and I w went on the drop down here, and I typed in great vibes, I don't know if it's going to come up. There it goes. I have to start typing it. There's great vibes. Now, I don't know how that'll look. Sometimes the numbers don't look good. I mean, it's OK, but I'm going to undo that, because I think it looked better in just the script. It was easier to read. So as long as you use one of them, as long as you're not just pulling some font just out of nowhere just to throw in there. So that looks OK. I mean, if you did do a line, you know, you might say, well, I, I like that idea with the line. What could you do here? Well, here's something you could do. And I'm just giving you ideas here. You could get the pen tool and you could go here and hold shift and go over here. And remember, double click again. It seems to keep putting an anchor point there, but I'll have to get rid of that. I'll go to my sub select again, click on that anchor point and hit delete. But now if I did this and for the border color, I could go to the eyedropper and try to just grab that. And you might say, well, I thought you said the line wouldn't look good. Well, instead of using the line to underline maple leaf, what if you did this? What what if you took this thing and you used it to kind of make a little, almost like a banner for this? If I took this under here, and that way it really set off wineries and it did something nice with it. Because now, why does that work? Because these are capital letters and there's nothing sticking up or sticking down. So now it fits nice in there. Now if you do that, 
it kind of sets it off nice. You're kind of separating this. Instead of instead of creating a line underneath maple leaf, you're, you're putting lines above and below wineries, which is separating it. So that looks kind of nice. You know, I, again, I'm just making this up as I go. I didn't really plan this out too much, but you could align all this stuff. I, I guess I could at least align the bottom stuff. Let's see what it looks like if I align it. And there's the align. It seems like it throws it off with the maple leaf. I would highlight all these things up here. Now these these are aligned down here, so that's good. But I might move this over just a little bit. It might just look better over a little bit because when you line it, the M takes so much space it pushes it over. So um, I, I'd like the the leaf to end right there, and I think that looks pretty good. So I like this one. This is the one I'm going to go with. Um, I'm going to hit save here, and I, the oak hollow is okay, but I, I think I like this. This has a nice kind of more playful look to it with some of the different colors. So I just saved it, and what I'm going to do, since this is the one I'm going to use, just for now, I'm going to group it. Now, if you just highlight, go around all these things and group it, it'll act as one. And actually, then when you scale it, it'll actually scale all the fonts nicely together when you do that. So again, I'm not worried about all the, the layers here and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on my, on my label. And since I spent a lot of time going over design stuff here, let me stop here and end part two here. And then in part three, I'll just finish up with the label. Just put this on the label. I'll, I'll put some of the gradients on the label and make the rectangle thing with the round corners and we'll finish that up. So that'll be in part three. So that's part one was kind of this thing, the Oak Hollow. Part two was was this thing using a script font with a serif font eventually, caps like that, again, which has contrast, yet they all kind of go together. There's a unity and there's a contrast. That's what you want to kind of look for. You want to make sure everything kind of works together. Nothing looks too out of place. So in part three, we're going to finish up with our label and put it on our bottle.